series and also and the interesting thing about this property is that I find myself always kind of you know, going back to the original poem rather than just kind of poem in the game and then game into these other things. It was like, how could we go back to the poem and look at Brandon and find in the poem that we're not doing in the game, um, for example, and just, you know, making sure that the core idea here really is the blind comedy, not necessarily the always just the video game. Okay, Ash, uh, I'm going to get back to you again. <laughs> he, he has no idea that, uh, where I'm taking this. So, no, I have no clue what slide. So if I, if I keep jumping in, we may want to do a little tag piece with it. So, um, but basically, what I want to do next is have Ash walk you through. Um, you know, what does it mean when we adapt? You know, you know, obviously there's the story and stuff, but literally just the environments and the way Dante described them. What was our process? And, and uh, hopefully that'll be somewhat interesting to you. Um, and I'm just going to take an example, which is the fifth circle of hell, and just have Ash kind of walk you through how we design that environment. So, um, in terms of sort of our environment design. Um, the poem is a huge, huge um, conceptual spine for us designing the artwork for it. If, uh, it sounds like a lot of you have read the poem, and I'm sure any of you remember it or have read it recently. It's an incredibly imaginative piece of work. Uh, there's an incredible, very rich, detailed description of what hell is like. And for us, it was a great uh, touchstone, inspirational for us. So in terms of this circle, which is really anger, uh, it's uh, basically the context of anger is predominantly it's a, it's a pretty stinky swamp. Uh, there's uh, the shades or what you might call the dam are flooded beneath the waters of it, um, and it's also uh, an important circle because actually it's the circle that precedes uh, your first view of hell proper, uh, which is the city of Dis or the capital city of hell, if you will. So, um, but usually as a, as a design process. The, uh, the team itself usually gets together. Uh, we do spend a lot of time reading the poem and making sure that we kind of understand the context of it, what's important, the important key landmarks. Um, Dante Alighieri, when he wrote it, um, described it in a sense that it is very much a real geographical place, and we did as a team spend some time sitting down and saying, uh, let's map hell out. And we actually had this huge whiteboard. We went through the entire poem, and he describes it in enough detail that you could actually literally draw out a map of walking through the entire sort of nine circles all the way through the bottom. So what we would do is just kind of sit down, and look at the action of the designer to just kind of go through the key points of the level that he does describe, and those that are up there, I'll read through them for anger. And then from there, we kind of go away in the corners, and actually go off with his team, and do kind of a catalyst painting, like a big painting that would maybe not be exactly what you're going to see in the game, but would just kind of contain the spirit of that. So what I'm going to do, Ash, is just kind of walk through that process of catalyst, the concept art, white box, and so forth. So I'll click through while you talk about this painting. It would be great if it kind of lights down a little bit to see the imagery better. So yeah, here, here we have uh, one of the concept catalyst paintings that we did for the city of this, which is the capital city of hell. Um, it's just one of many. We, we produce tons and tons of concept images, but um, from that, basically, uh, the designers are working on one side of the fence, we're working on the other, and usually the catalyst stuff is done in absence of any understanding of the design. So it's our sense of kind of blue sky stuff, and design kind of works on their side, um, working out the gameplay, and, and we do communicate with them during that process, but while they're white boxing out what's going to make an actual really cool gameplay experience, we're beginning to start to flesh out what the design vocabulary is, like what we want to pull out. So for example, in the anger, the swamp elements, uh, the people that are located in the, the shades that are in the water, um, what fire is going to look like for this, um, what the wall is going to look like, uh, what, what you know, piles and piles of people, how are they going to be depicted? Because that's a really big element for us, for hell, is how, how that aspect of kind of torture is reflected in the environment, it's a big piece a big sort of visual component to the way we're designing the world. So this is the wedding plaza, which uh, sort of precedes your final walk-up to this. Um, and so once the designers are kind of working through uh, through a level, they break it up into pieces, and our guys start going over top of those, what we call white box, basically. It's, it's a description of the gameplay design space, and we take that and then we begin to add a visual layer over top of it uh, to add, basically, skin it. In into its final final form and what we see in the game. 
Yeah, and so again, sorry that's kind of dark, but this is just what you saw in that video. So that's just kind of one little piece that's right before the city of Dis, just kind of following through, through uh, the art team's process. Um, okay, cool, and then uh, on characters, um, you know, I think one of the, you know, and at, if you could just kind of take us through, I'm gonna have two examples, King Minos and Cerberus, just kind of like, you know, our process there, and a little bit about um, reference. Yeah, so, um, again, going back to the poem, we kind of look at the description of how they're, like, in, in the case of Minos and uh, Cerberus, how they're described. Um, we had the opportunity, I should note, that, you know, early on when we were designing characters, uh, many of you know Wayne Barlow. Um, Wayne was a big sort of contributor to, uh, to our project early on, and, I mean, he knows and has thought about hell probably more than any artist that I can think of. He's done an awesome job of it. So for those of you that are in the Hellboy, um, Wayne's your guy. Uh, so he was fantastic to work with. But we would basically take the images, Dore, Dore did some etchings, um, and then cross that with the poem. You kind of pull out what's important about that particular boss character. In this case, for Minos, uh, he was the judge of, judge of the band when you arrived in that slide that JK showed earlier about you know processing the yellow side of them, which is sort of limbo, where the damn go and basically judgment is passed on by King Mino. Uh, the big thing about him is he's blind and he has this huge tail, and so how do we kind of work that in? Um, we wanted to make sure that there was some kind of king aspect about him, and so there was the design of his crown, which has shades and, and uh, inserted into the, um, the negative spaces of the crown. Uh, but that was a lot of fun to kind of work through. Um, Cerberus has traditionally been depicted as the three-headed wolf. In the poem, Cerberus actually presides as the guardian over gluttony, and so um, Wayne took a take on it, which was great, and created a creature that was really all about the mouth. And uh, so you can see in that slide over there, there's sort of a larger white toad-like creature with a massive mouth, and then out of it is vomited these sort of longer, sorry, creatures that again are all about the mouth. So this was a perfect kind of entry into gluttony, which was all about, you know, consumption and all of that kind of thing. And to make a horrific creature that would kind of be the first thing you almost kind of encounter. Uh, it was a great, uh, it was great fun. Okay, cool. Thanks, Ash. Um, so a little bit on just sort of design, that was you know, just kind of design process in the game. There's so much incredible content in the game. It's hard to sort of pick some of the favorites, but um, you know, from there we were able to kind of establish um, the style guides and the designs for these characters and environments, and really then begin to kind of work with our partners on the other projects. So um, uh, I'm going to now let kind of Christos uh, talk for a little bit. You know, um, this is a really exciting comic series. There's a preview of it being given out um, at the EA booth and, and the DC booth, and definitely get your hands on it if you haven't. Um, and there's also a, a lithograph. This is actually the lithograph um, an image of it um, here on the screen. And uh, um, at the booth later, there's going to be, um, well, I've got the time and place for that. But Diego Vittoria, the artist, is signing those in the limited edition run. So um, definitely try to get your hands on one. So, um, Christos, do you want to just take it away and talk about you know, how you sort of plan the story? Uh, absolutely. Well, first of all, let me know that uh, Diego wanted to be here and he will be here. He's coming in from Spain. Uh, it won't be until tonight. But he will be at the show tomorrow and Saturday, so if you get a chance, there are some copies of the preview comics on either side of the stage. You can out. Um, he and I will be signing them tomorrow and Saturday at the Wild Star booth. I will be signing there today at the EA booth at 2 o'clock. Um, and uh, Diego is just an amazing, amazing uh, artist, as you can see, not at all in traditional what you think of as superhero comic book art. So, um, what happened, in my case, I was brought in uh, by Wildstorm, who I've worked with before, and they told me about the project, which sounded awesome, and I was privileged to go up to the EA headquarters and the compound, as I like to call it, and, and play the game, which was great fun. Um, and what we talked about was, you know, it's interesting because a lot of times what you want to do in a comic book adaptation, you don't want to just reach out the game, because people who play the game already know what that is. So, um, but in this case, you can't really diverge too much. You can't say, well, let's tell the backstory of this character or that character because Dante's Inferno is about a descent into hell, Dante's quest. So, uh, what we tried to do is try to shed a little bit more light on some of the other characters, like Beatrice, really get into her head and find out what's going on, show that she's more than just a damsel in distress, 
and uh, Lucifer as well, uh, and sort of get a look at what they're all about while at the same time staying with Dante's uh, action. So, um, you know, hopefully what we're going for and what we'll hopefully see is an experience that if you play the game, you read the comic, and in addition to joining the beautiful art, you get a look at some of these other characters' deeper understanding of what's going on in the game. Uh, so I hope that you find that to be the case. You can get a preview of the comic, the first issue of the comic. Here's one right here. Like I said, they're on either side of the stage. Um, and I have to apologize because I have to leave about 15 minutes early, so I won't be able to sign any here. But like I said, I'll be at the EA at 2 o'clock, and please do come by. And any questions you have at that time, I'll be glad to answer. Uh, oh, and there you go. This is, I mean, just look at his stuff. He, he does such amazing... Uh, you know, if you know artists like uh, Ashley Wood or Bill Sienkiewicz or Ben Temple Smith, you know, it's sort of that school, very uh, powerful, very visceral, and totally appropriate for this project. So, uh, you know, please come by, especially tomorrow and the next day, and see the video. He's a really nice guy. I've never met him in person. I'm very excited to. Um, and as you can see, he's really he's, he's great at storytelling, but he just gives you so much mood and feeling that's so important for this project. Thanks, Chris. That's a nice one. It's sort of going to tie it back. But, um, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a pretty cool process, sort of like having the game team, you know, design, develop these characters and coming up with style guys and then, you know, really seeing the interpretation of those characters um, and to be doing all this in parallel um, just really requires you know, some super talented people. But you can see there the high res renders from Blur Studios of our uh, hero and heroine and then uh, how those were kind of created from the style guys from the game and then Diego's uh, interpretation of that. Sort of keeping the, the few key elements um, that we think define those characters, but then interpreting them for the, the different media. And then, uh, you know, the, the other really cool project that's going on is the animated feature. So I introduced these guys earlier, um, and I'll just let Brandon talk a little bit about, you know, what that's been like to, to write that script. Well, it's been a, uh, an amazing experience. I mean, I've never had a chance to write an animated feature on this like scale before. I mean, it's it's incredibly dark and violent and bloody and gory. There's body parts flying around, and Vic and I were just talking about how we had to cut some stuff out because, I mean, it's probably one of the goriest, um, disturbing uh, animated films that's been produced in America in quite some time. So I think you guys are really going to dig it. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's like something that you guys I know are all going to like really uh, sink your teeth into, literally. I mean, we've got like. Uh, Bodies flying around. We've got uh, Dante getting uh, literally shoved up a monster's uh, butt. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just it's it's just total insanity. So this is something that you guys are definitely going to eat up. And, and it was just a really fun, amazing process. I mean, uh, we didn't have a lot of time to uh, in the beginning. Like I didn't have a lot of time to write the script. So I was writing the script literally while I'm trying to, to read the uh, clip notes. I mean the poem. Uh, <laughs> no, no, actually I did. I I. I it was really difficult because as I'm writing you know, the circle, I'm, I'm cross-referencing with the column and trying to, you know, I, I wanted to really, I wanted anybody who read the, who read the, the epic poem to, to see the animated film and kind of to, to, you know, not think that we're just going off and doing whatever we want, we want to be true to the, to the spirit of the poem. And, uh, but, you know, obviously there's no real story in the poem. That's the problem. It's just a night of tour of hell. So, you know, it already exists a really fantastic game script that, that you guys wrote. And, uh, so taking that and looking at the poem, we, we managed to, to, and I also was able to take things that weren't, that those guys weren't able to utilize um, in the video game, like the Minotaur and some of the other creatures and the people with the lion animals and confront the demon. But it was just a great experience. It was a lot of fun, and uh, I can't wait to see it. There's, we're going to show some animation soon, and I haven't even seen it, so I'm really stoked. Yeah, I like that. In fact, that scene, it, you know, in the game script, you originally wrote that Cerberus was going to shove Dante up his ass, and uh, it was this crazy, crazy scene, and we just couldn't do it in the game for a bunch of reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Not because we didn't want to, we just, just like, you know, the three animation of it was just complicated, and um, <laughs> so to like have that moment, which was in the game script, and then cut from the game, but then to show up in the animated feature. Um, it's just really cool and it's going to be great for the team. A lot of people on the game team don't even know that that's going to show up in the movie and stuff. So really just trying to do a lot of cross-pollination and, um, you know, and bring some characters from the column to life, uh, like Brian said, in the, in the movie that aren't in the game and so forth. So, um, 
And then, you know, the other amazing thing about the uh, animated feature, of course, is that, you know, we didn't want to just do one style, or actually do six, and I'll let um, Vic talk a little bit about that. I did actually theme for uh, the producer of the film, Joe Juliet, and they came to the indigenous films in different styles, much like Animatrix or Tops of Night. But unlike those, those were like also uh, short stories put together by 20 to 20 years ago. Uh, we were lucky enough to get Manglo, IG, really famous anime directors and studios on board, and uh, to, uh, we auditioned, uh, six uh, Korean studios and found great ones. And uh, in the process of planning the style, making sure the style was different, um, 